Welcome to Bay Area Psychology. We are especially fortunate to be joined by best-selling author Lawrence Green, founder of the Developmental Learning Center in San Jose. His newest publication is The Life Smart Kid, aimed at teaching our children to use good judgment. Our children will be faced with choices and temptations that will affect the course of his or her life. We hope they will make clear, logical, and moral choices. Mr. Green assures us it's not a matter of chance, prayer, or IQ. Decision-making can be taught in a systematic way. We can improve our children's thinking, reasoning, and survival skills. Welcome, Mr. Green. I want to thank you for making some time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Bay Area Psychology. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. I really enjoyed uh, your book, The Life Smart Kid. And as I mentioned before we started, um, I, as I was reading through it, uh, saw many different applications for this. And I'm wondering, um, this certainly isn't the first uh, publication that you have. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering where this one, uh, what this came out of. It's interesting, uh, my evolution as an educator, and I am an educator, I'm not a psychologist. Um, I started my professional career working with kids who were struggling in school, and specifically kids who had learning disabilities, kids who were dyslexic, kids who had attention deficit disorder, and um, wrote several books that addressed that issue. I wrote a book called Kids Who Underachieve and Learning Disabilities and Your Child. And I realized that many of the kids that I was working with in addition to having these learning problems, did not know how to think in a strategic, logical way. And I also discovered that there were lots of kids who didn't have learning problems, who didn't know how to think tactically and strategically. And uh, I became fascinated with uh, the nuts and bolts of what, what is logical, rational thinking about, and began to explore it, began to develop methods for working with children. And um, this is perhaps the, the fourth book I've written dealing with issues of uh, strategic thinking. Okay. So when you talk about uh, children who even do not maybe have a developmental disability or any kind of learning disability, but simply haven't been given the skills to do that, I mean, that puts me in mind of adults who haven't been given the skills, too. Well, I think it's an epidemic today, Mary. I think that uh, somewhere in our culture something is missing, and the wisdom that parents normally impart to their children, their thinking processes, their ability to analyze problems and deal with defeats and deal with temptation and challenges, somehow in many cases that is not being imparted to kids. And the net result is that you have kids that are sort of floating through life yeah. mindlessly. Yeah. And they're making tragically flawed decisions. Now those are at the extreme, but then you have other kids who are not perhaps making as tragically flawed decisions who are not doing their homework or um, just getting into conflict continually with their parents. They have moderate self-sabotaging behavior. And so you have, a, as with any problem, you have a spectrum and you have kids that have extremely dysfunctional behavior and then you have kids who have moderately dysfunctional behavior and then you have kids who have subtly dysfunctional behavior. And what I tried to do was come up with a methodology so that parents could take a proactive role in analyzing situations with their children so that they could help them reason and think more clearly. Well, and you make the statement in uh, your book, The Life Smart Kid, that this book is not written to develop uh, or to address psychological issues. Like, you know, for some of the uh, more uh, psychiatric issues, that requires professional counseling. Gotcha. So really, this is written for maybe in the spectrum you're referring to perhaps moderate or more subtle uh, difficulties. Just the issue of danger. Um, if you have a child who for some unconscious reason, some unconscious agenda, continually puts his life at risk. That's a psychological issue that needs to be dealt with by someone like yourself or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. But there are children who, who do mindless things that have, in many cases, tragic consequences, who do not have psychological problems. They're simply not looking at the situation rationally. Okay. Those are the kids that I'm concerned about. I'm certainly concerned about the other ones also, right. but when I have a parent come to me and say, can you help my child learn how to think more effectively, and in looking at the family system and in looking at the child's psychology, I realize that there's, there's some issues that need to be dealt with uh, in therapy, then I'm going to refer that child out for therapy. But there okay. are lots of kids who who just uh, are making these flawed decisions and uh, they're doing poorly in school, they're not handing their homework in, um, they're driving with someone who might be drunk, they may be going to a party where they know that there's a high risk of gang violence. Those are the kinds of junctures that children arrive at 
And what I'm about is trying to help those kids look at that situation, take a step back, look at it rationally, and make an astute judgment. Okay. You know, this reminds me of a conversation I had this morning with someone where we were talking about um, societally, you know, when we look at this issue, how we reward ourselves. I mean, even as adults, it's sort of, we're talking about our sense of rights, claiming our rights, and sort of our, our right to do self-destructive things. Mm -hmm. That part of being a grown-up, or part of children um, looking forward to being an adult, it's sort of like, well, when I'm an adult, I'm going to stay up till 3 o'clock every morning. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm an adult, I'll be able to drink as much as I want. I'll mm -hmm. be able to drive a really fast cars. You know, that's sort of uh, something going on that looking at unhealthy choices is sort of a right of being, or a privilege uh, of being an adult. And, and sometimes you can get away with some of those decisions and, and seemingly go through a period of recklessness and, and emerge at the other end and your life is still intact. But there are lots of kids who emerge at the other end and their lives are not intact. They, they really close doors. If you have a, a kid who has 140 IQ and he's at a school, a private school, a good school, Bellarmine, St. Francis, whatever, and he's flunking out because he's not doing his work, um, it doesn't mean that he can't perhaps down the road get his life together and right. get a sense of direction and go to university, but, but certainly uh, there's, there's the real possibility that, that certain options are, are no longer going to be available to that, to that young man or young woman. And so uh, I think parents need to get involved, and I think what's happening in our society, my read is that we're so preoccupied with earning a living and paying the bills and keeping ahead of, of, of our debt that we tend to spend less and less time in an instructional mode with our children. I mean, we are our kids' primary teachers. We're their role models. We, we have to inculcate our wisdom to them. And if we're not doing that, we can't assume that the school is going to do it. We can't assume that somehow, through some magical osmosis process, they're going to assimilate this, th th these, uh, this foundation for making smart choices. I mean, if you look, at, if you look traditionally, um, historically, if a child came from a, f a farming family, uh, dad would take his son out into the fields and talk about irrigation and talk about crop rotation, and mom would impart her wisdom to her daughter. And, and that was an important instructional component of uh, getting these kids ready for life. I think that's missing in many cases. Now, I know I'm generalizing, and I know that there are people who are listening to this program, watching this program, who will say, well, I do that with my child. And I say, great, I support you. But it's my sense that a lot of parents aren't doing that. Yeah. And again, it may not be a matter of unwillingness, but maybe a matter of, for many of us today, there's often an emphasis on surviving and, like you said, taking care of kind of the fundamental things about keeping the family going, which includes maybe working, uh, working hard and maybe not being as available. Let's take a look at how you do this. You said you have a system. Let's take a look at the first two uh, components. If you want to improve your child's thinking, reasoning, and survival skills, you must teach your child to think clearly, which you say differentiate appearances from reality, assess options rationally, act logically, and avoid danger, which is assess and reduce risks and make astute and reasonable decisions. So let's take the first one in terms of thinking clearly. Uh, differentiating appearances from reality and looking at our options, acting logically. How, um, how would you convey to a child that concept? Well, in the book, um, and I wrote this book about two years ago, but I recall distinctly that there was an anecdote that was taken from the San Francisco Chronicle about an incident in Texas where these four teenagers decided to go out and drink beer. And they thought it would be neat to drink beer on top of a oil containment structure. Okay? okay, so they climbed up there and they're drinking beer, and um, one guy wondered whether the thing had any oil inside of it. So he lights a match to look inside, and of course the whole thing explodes, and I think two were killed and others were injured. Now, if you read an article like that, I mean, it, it, it's mindless, obviously. I mean, anyone read is going to shake their heads and say, these, these kids clearly are, they're missing a couple of vital bolts okay. neurologically. But nevertheless, you read an article like that, I think it's an opportunity to explore the issues with your child, where you might read that at the dinner table and say, gee, what do you think they were thinking when they, when, when they went out there to, 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 to uh, 
drink this beer. And I, I don't think you should come on in a very moralistic way. I mean, yeah. clearly you may have strong issues about kids drinking, and, and certainly that is an issue. But I think the most important issue here is what happens to kids when their judgment is suspended and they're doing what the other kids are doing, and how can they take a step back and say, gee, I don't want to put myself in this situation. And I think the dinner table is an ideal time for people to explore, and it has to be done in a way where you're not sort of rattling off questions at the child. You just have to say, what do you think is going on in his mind? What could get someone to do something like light a match to see if, um, if an oil tank is full of oil? Well, and you make the point in your book about um, the absence of judgment. In fact, you say that multiple times, which has to do with this is not an opportunity to lecture, be uh, uh, overbearing, in fact, to even judge your children's answers. I think you know much of um, your focus had to do with opening that communication. It's the process. Right. And you know, I recall um, when I was a, 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 a young child, um, my dad would get home from work late, and he would eat after my brother and I had eaten, and my mother would be at the table with him and they would be discussing his day at work. And my father was a business executive and he would often talk about some of the challenges that he encountered and personnel problems and financial problems, cash flow problems and what have you. And I would listen. I, 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 didn't, I didn't listen every time, but many times I did listen. And I think I assimilated a certain ability to look at issues because I was exposed to that give and take between my mother and my father. And um, this may surprise you, but I'm an old dad. I just had a little baby. Okay. And uh, I am absolutely committed with this little guy. He's a year old now, um, to spending time with him, to helping him reason, to helping him look at situations where he's putting himself at risk. And clearly, I have to gear it to his developmental level. Well, absolutely. And, and you make that point, and we're going to take a break here in a moment. We'll come back to that. But you make the point, I mean, you've structured these exercises for different ages. That's right. And we'll talk some more about that. Stay with us. When we return, we'll learn more keys to good judgment.